across the coasts of Westeros, wherever the sound of the waves can be heard, tales are told of savage raiders who come from the sea to pillage and burn before disappearing back onto the open ocean. These were the Ironborn, fierce warriors whose savage life on the barely civilized Iron Islands gave rise to a unique and brutal culture whose dark legacy is still felt across the world today. Yet even such a land requires kings and lords to rule it, and since the time of Aegon's conquest, the Iron Islands have been firmly in the grasp of the Golden Kraken, House Greyjoy. Like all the great houses of the Iron Islands, the Greyjoys claim descent from the Grey King, a legendary figure from the Age of Heroes who is said to have vanquished the great sea dragon Naga, taken a mermaid to wife, brought fire to the earth, and ruled for over a thousand years. In the ages since, the Ironborn have chosen their own rulers through the King's Moot, Iron Kings of Salt and Steel who ruled from atop the Sea Stone Chair. During this time, the Greyjoys and the Ironborn lived their lives by what is now known as the Old Way, an ancient tradition of reaving and plundering. Farming, mining, and commerce were thought to be the works of lesser men, a belief espoused in the Greyjoy words, we do not sow. Instead, the Ironborn gained glory and fortune through battle and slaughter, referred to as paying the Iron Price. Using their unequaled mastery of the sea, the Ironborn launched a series of rampant lightning raids across Westeros, carrying away whatever plunder could be found, as well as men to serve as thralls and women to serve as saltwives. Over time, they carved a great kingdom that stretched across the Riverlands, and their ships were known and feared as far as the free cities of Essos. First and foremost a seafaring culture, the Ironborn treated their ships as the Dothraki treated their horses. Every captain was said to be a king aboard his own ship, and the Iron Islands the land of 10,000 kings. When Aegon the Conqueror landed on the continent, this kingdom was ruled by Heron the Black of House Hor, King of the Isles and the Riverlands. However, King Heron proved no more able to resist Aegon's conquest than any other king before him, and despite barricading himself within Harrenhal, the largest and greatest castle in the Seven Kingdoms, Heron the Black was burned alive by Dragonfire, ending his line and reducing his castle to a twisted and shattered reminder of what happens to those who resist House Targaryen. With their holdings on the continent destroyed and their kingdom left in ruins, the families of the Iron Islands turned against one another. When Aegon finally arrived on the Iron Islands themselves, he allowed the Ironborn to choose their own lord, for which they selected Vicon of House Greyjoy. The reign of the Ironborn kings was seemingly over, and the old way gone with it. The Ironborn may have accepted the rule of the Targaryens, but they never accepted their religion. The Faith of the Seven had as much difficulty taking root in the Iron Islands as vegetation, and no matter how hard the Septons and Silent Sisters tried, they could not supplant the ancient cult of the Drowned God, or He Who Dwells Beneath the Waves. The Drowned God is unique to the Iron Islands, seen as the creator of the seas and the Ironborn themselves, born in his image to reave, pillage, carve out kingdoms, make their names known in fire, blood, and song, to hold dominion over all the waters of the earth. In death, the Ironborn are said to join the Drowned God in his watery halls, to drink and feast for all eternity, giving rise to the blessing, what is dead may never die, but rises again harder and stronger. Over the centuries, House Greyjoy attempted to put this mantra back in practice, reviving the old way for a time before being beaten back into submission by the Iron Throne or the other great houses of the continent. When the Mad King Ares II was overthrown and the Targaryen dynasty along with it during Robert's Rebellion, Balon Greyjoy believed the time was right to restore the independence of the Iron Islands. Six years into the rule of King Robert Baratheon, Balon's brothers, Victarion and Euron, led a daring raid into the harbor at Lannisport, burning the Lannister fleet at anchor and igniting the Greyjoy Rebellion. 
This brief foray into independence ended much like the others. Victarion's fleet was defeated at sea by Stannis Baratheon, and Pike, the seat of House Greyjoy, was stormed a short time later. Balon Greyjoy, defeated on land and sea, swore fealty to King Robert, and the rebellion was ended. Balon never gave up on his dream to once again wear a driftwood crown, and when Westeros fell into chaos following the death of King Robert, Balon marshaled his forces at Pike in preparation for a renewed attack upon the Greenlands. While hardly a major military power in Westeros, very few could match the Ironborn at sea. Each great lord commanded hundreds of longships or more, while the Iron Fleet, comprised of the largest and most powerful warships, was sworn to House Greyjoy and the Sea Stone Chair. Of the fleets in Westeros, only the royal fleet itself and the ships of House Redwine could hope to match the Iron Islands, and with the chaos across the continent, House Greyjoy was given an almost free hand. In a surprise attack, Victarion Asha and Theon Greyjoy led the Ironborn in a series of daring assaults across the north, taking Moat Caelan, Deepwood Mott, the Stony Shore, and most importantly, Winterfell itself. Yet Balon, now styling himself King of the Iron Islands and the North, had barely begun to enjoy the fruits of his victories when he fell to his death crossing one of the many rope bridges of Pike during a terrible storm. Stranger still was the sudden arrival of the banished Euron Greyjoy in the immediate wake of his brother's death, sitting himself upon the sea stone chair and drowning those who objected. When Balon's youngest brother, the drowned priest Aaron Greyjoy, attempted to place Victarion on the throne by reviving the ancient custom of the King's Moot, the attempt backfired, and Euron was legitimized as the King of the Iron Islands. Many strange tales are told of Euron Crow's Eye, a pirate who has never given up the old way even for a day. It is said he commands a ship named the Silence, with black sails and a dark red hull to conceal the stains of blood upon it. Rumors abound of how he captured warlocks from distant Karth to learn the secrets of black magic, how he sailed all the way to a shy by the shadow and perhaps even to the smoking ruins of doomed Valyria itself. Euron's strange cohorts and the ancient relics he has in his possession seem to lend credence to at least some of these claims, but Euron's wild unpredictability and penchant for vicious mind games make separating the truth and fiction of his life almost impossible. Whatever his true goals are, no Ironborn can deny Euron has done more in his short time as King of the Iron Islands to achieve dominion over the continent than almost any lord before him. The Golden Kraken of House Greyjoy now flies above the strongholds of the Shield Isles, and Ironborn raiders have struck along the Reach all the way to Old Town. Yet Euron's machinations do not end there, and many whisper that his plans extend all the way to the Iron Throne itself, or perhaps even beyond. The Templin Institute investigates nations, organizations, and factions from alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Do you have a suggestion for a future episode? Let us know by leaving a comment.